Hello, I'm Rev Trina. Croiso, welcome. This week we're in Llanfihangel Talishin Church, dedicated to St Michael and All Angels. The foundation of this church is very, very ancient, dating well before 1066, and the tower and the porch and the font date from the 15th century. The rest of the church was rebuilt in Victorian times, around about 1865 to 70. And the registers for the church date back to the early uh, 1800s. Do please join in with our service. All the words are provided. Thank you. An opening prayer. Let us together reflect on our experience of God this week. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed, perplexed, yet not in despair, persecuted, yet not abandoned, struck down, yet not destroyed. We reveal the life of Jesus in all we do. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen and eternal. Amen. <laughs> Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. 
This reading is closely tied to verses 13 to 20 from Matthew, last week's Gospel lesson. In verse 16, Peter confessed his faith that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. In today's reading, Jesus shows him what messiahship and discipleship entail. Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. It seems harsh and out of character for Jesus, especially talking to Peter, one of his most faithful disciples. Why did Jesus say this? What was it Peter did to deserve such a rebuke? Well, without realising, Peter was speaking for Satan. The Gospels tell us that just after his baptism by John, Jesus is tested and tempted in the desert. In Matthew's Gospel, the tester is referred to as the devil in the first two tests. But Matthew ends the third test with Jesus naming the tester as Satan. In this third test, Jesus is promised all the kingdoms of the world if he would turn from God and instead worship the devil. Jesus replies sharply, Be gone, Satan, for it is written that you shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So Jesus replied to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on divine things, but on human things. Peter is the only human person called Satan in the Gospels. And using Satan's name indicates that Peter expected Jesus to establish an earthly kingdom. Jesus has rejected this concept of kingdomship as being at odds with his mission from God when he sent Satan on his way in the desert. So Jesus tells Peter that avoiding suffering and death is equivalent to Jesus turning away from his mission and from God. Then, straight after rebuking Peter, Jesus tells his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake shall find it. Following Jesus involves accepting to suffer. Clearly, Peter would have known that if Jesus were to be crucified, Peter himself was in danger of the same fate. At the time, Jesus' stern reprimand did not make sense to Peter. And at first hearing, we can be puzzled by Jesus' anger towards Peter. But there is within it a profound message for us, too. Peter had the wrong view of God's plan for Jesus because Peter couldn't bear the thought of Jesus suffering and dying. Really, Peter was focusing on his own plans and not what had to happen to Jesus as the Messiah. So Jesus' rebuke was in order to get him back on track. Like Peter, we can have the wrong view of what we should be doing how we should be responding to God and whether we are listening to his plans for us. This can so easily happen when we're busy getting on with life, when our focus is on our careers, our possessions, our safety, the material things of the world, rather than the proclaiming of God's message of love for each other, of salvation and eternal life. This is a reminder that speaking the words, Jesus is the Messiah, requires only our thoughts. But living those words is a gift of God. Embodying hope in the Messiah is an act of God's love. May our focus always be on God and his plans for us, on loving our neighbours, whoever they are, on serving God in humility. May we never experience a similar rebuke from our Lord. Amen.
our prayers. We pray, Lord God, for this united kingdom, that there may be peace within it, and all those in need are supported by loving care. We pray for those who suffer, that you will be with them in their need, especially those who mourn the loss of a loved one. We pray for ourselves that we have the strength to do what is right in your sight, in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. trouble and in joy, help us to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love forevermore. Amen.